Hello the Darkness 344 here and in today's video I'm going to be showing off this well um what I like to call almost like a display cache but in in reality all it is is serial RAM so this is just a very simple design of serial RAM using just a standard repeater locking method and it can read out at one tick per bit and each cell well holds one byte of information so 8 bits and then of course we have um, four, eight, eight of these um, bytes in one like cell and the reason I've done it this way is because um, I'm reading eight of these in parallel uh, out to this display over here so um, this well the way I've got it set up it kind of is like a display cache but in reality, you'd probably use um, a different type of RAM for a display. This is kind of bad <laughs> and because it's slow and because of a few, a few limitations, which I'll get to in a bit. But first of all, so how, how, what does this do and how does it work? So over here, we have this input device, which all it is, is a very simple serial encoder, which takes your number that you put in. So a binary number, so I put in 01001010 and basically just encodes it into a series of pulses to send down this one line. Then it, as the number comes down this line, it also sends a signal to, well, the control parts and it will um, go into all these cells at once. However, only the cell that is addressed, so say if it's addressed to cell 0, which it is at the moment, only the cell that is addressed will deactivate, so all of these repeaters over here will deactivate, breaking all of these repeater locks, meaning that the information coming in will actually be able to get past this repeater locks, because if, if you don't know how repeater locks work, it's basically uh, like this. So, so when a repeater isn't locked, we can pass a one or zero through. However, when a repeater is locked, it will lock the state it is in. So at the moment it's in the state of zero. And as you can see, we can't pass a number in, but say we put it in the state of one, well, we can't pass a zero or one into it because it's already a state of one and it's locked. So this is very useful for this sort of like RAM or anything like this. So basically it will only unlock if it's been addressed to which will mean that all the data will come in and seeing as it's one tick per bit and we're sending eight bits of data so it'll go one bit, two bit, three bit, four bit, five bit, six bit, seven bit, eight bit and hey, what do you know? These eight bits are also eight ticks, well redstone ticks so when it hits this one, uh, some complicated timing will, well it won't detect that it's actually hit this one it'll just, it just knows that it hits this one because of the way I've timed everything and then all of these repeated locks will um, lock again and your information will be stuck in here. So let's just show this off. So say I'll put it on this first row up here just for it's easier. So let's just put in say this number. So 11011011. And I did a tutorial of this serial encoder a while ago. So if th there's a tutorial on this if you want to know how to do make one of these. So then we can address the cell, I'm addressing cell 0, so 0, 0, 0, so cell 0. We have an input, an output, and also a rewrite, which I'll come to in a bit, uh, along with some of the drawbacks of this type of um, memory. So we just hit input, it'll send, and as you can see, it tells this to write, it writes along. As I was saying, it basically um, sends the data down into here, these unlock, and then relock, and as we get, 1101011. And there we go, now we've stored um, some data. However, what happens if we want to read this data? Well then, the only way we can easily read this is either we build it a bit bigger, so uh, we have a space in between each of our repeaters like this, and then we read off like this, but then it isn't serial. And the whole point of this um, is to be serial because it's very compact and small. You can store a lot of information in a very small space compared to regular RAM. However, this isn't serial because you're, you're reading off um, them all at the same time. That's um, parallel and it'll just make it a lot bigger and stuff and we don't really want to do that. 
you might as well just use like RAM in that case, or like just a traditional RAM or something. So what we can do is we can unlock these repeaters again and let the data, or yeah, data in here, drain out, uh, go along here, and then of course this is our output over here, and we can basically output it to whatever we want. Over here I've got this nice display so we can visualize it quite easily, and it will basically come along this line and it will um, yeah, just be encoded back into parallel data and uh, displayed and saved on this display. So let's just see that in action. So if I come down here, let me just turn this off so I can show you this in a minute. Click output and as we can see, we get the output. And I, I don't know what this is all about. I think there must have been um, data left in the system. Let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot about this bit. So let's just retry that again. So if I send an input, we should get our data coming in to here. And this is just the first row, by the way. So of course I can do all eight rows if I really wanted to. But I'm just showing the first row off because it's the simplest. So there we go. And that is our data displayed. However, then we come across a problem. With this type of RAM, um, it's what you call, um, I guess the term is volatile. But basically what happens is... Um, once you read from it, it's uh, the state will go, it'll reset all back to zeros. And this is, um, I guess, useful if you're just doing, if you only need to read the information off once. So say in the display, you may only need to read the information off once. So say so you can store a bunch of, well, frames in all these different um, cells. And you only need to read those frames once because they're, you, well, you just only want to display it once. So that's fine in this case. However, say you, you wanted this um, to be a more permanent thing, so you had it in a computer, say. Well, you want to read it more than once, don't you? So, what we have over here is a little mechanism that's kind of clever. And basically what it does is you can just tick the rewrite option over here, so just enable this. And as soon as the data gets um, outputted, it will basically go back around from the output and go with a lot of clever timing circuits back into the input of the same cell. And then you will rewrite uh, the information. There are a, There is a disadvantage to this though. So even though it works perfectly fine, so let's input that number again. So as you can see, we've inputted it. So 1101011. And if we enable the rewrite function and then rewrite it, as you can see, it goes along and we get the exact same number, so 11011011. The problem is, is this increases um, the time it takes uh, for consecutive um, reading. So say I wanted to read this cell, then read this cell, then read this cell. Especially in a display where you're reading each individual frame, say, say you do it one frame every five seconds. Well, if you just had it so it doesn't have the rewrite function, you could read it, well, basically almost every eight ticks. So you could do eight ticks, eight ticks, eight ticks, which is 0.8 seconds, which is very fast. However, since you're adding the rewrite function, you also have to add in time for it to rewrite to do the display. You can't do two consecutive um, read and a write at the same time, just because of the way I've built this, which means that it will effectively double the time you can, uh, it takes to access each individual cell. So instead of um, 0.8 seconds to access this one, of course, not accounting for any latency of the circuit, it will take 0.16, well, 1.6 seconds for this one, which is, well, double the time and is kind of annoying if you want to access them very fast, especially if your computer needs to, to access the information very fast. So yeah, there is a downside to this type of RAM, and it's, but you, it's still useful, I would say because it's, it's just so compact compared to like a traditional design. And so basically, let's just try it out. I have, you can, let's try all of them out. So of course we can program whatever we want into any of them. So the, the way I've set this up is kind of confusing because I have row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, row six, row seven, and row eight. And I'd have liked them all on the same side, but the, the way, the reason I did it on both sides it's because just to save a bit of space however so let's say if I put one here and also one here 
then input it to cell zero and then output it as you can see it's um, well one then another so it's, it's kind of confusing it's, it's not like you can do this one then this one and this one will be directly under this one there goes this 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 so yeah just just a slight um problem with the way i've built it but this can of course this decode i mean encoder can always be swapped for a different one so let's just try a few i've got a few different things down here so let's say if i'm just going to do put in cell one and then output that i'm just going to leave this on as well as we can see we get a smile lovely and then of course we we can just do all of these and it is just a very good way to store information and also um, just read it back. So here we have, what do we have? Very terrible and off-center YouTube logo, lovely stuff. And then of course you can just basically, I on this one I've had, I think there's eight cells, but you can of course expand this as much as you want. I, I don't know what this is, honestly. No, I, I, I don't know, but it seems to be broken. Sorry for the weird cut, but basically we encountered some data corruption in our device. And this is due to, well, me building it incorrectly. And I originally actually thought it was a different thing. And I actually, well, I thought I fixed this, and I even as went as far as to almost upload this video. I uploaded it to my channel, and was about to hit publish, but then I found, hmm, maybe something else is incorrect. So I uh, hopped back on into the world download, which is this world right here, had a, a play around, and as you may see, there is some slight changes um, from the last cut to the design, and that's because I basically fixed this. So one of the... The, the main problem we had was that the, the image was getting corrupted and I originally thought this was because I just clicked it too fast however it's not um, that, that's not the case basically what happened is because my output line with the rewrite function was actually tied through through this comparator and this was originally connected back to the input line because it, it would go down here and activate these again and that's what I intended it to do. However, it also connects up to this line, which goes all the way down here, as you can see, into our serial input, which basically means instead of actually rewriting the contents of the cell to itself, it was just requesting another input and writing off of the input. And this is not what we want. And the reason behind this, like why we don't want it to be doing this is because We'll say the input was different to what the cell contained. It, it just wouldn't work. Or we'll say your input wasn't connected at the time you were reading off of the cell. Well, that wouldn't work. So basically, it was it was reading off the cell and inputting at the same time, and it was just getting corrupted basically. So we we just don't want this to happen. So I've implemented a fix with like the proper actual proper way of doing it, and now it works perfectly so you can use the rewrite function as it's intended to do so say if we uh, at address zero we input a smiley face and then we output it as you can see we'll get our smiley face and of course we can always just keep outputting it and we will continue to get smiley faces even if the input line is disconnected so if i disconnect it like this we should still continue to get smiley faces and uh, it should be resaved. So if we output, as you can see, the data flows back through the repeaters, back into the cell and it's saved. So that's pretty good then. So now we're basically going to be cutting back to the original video where I explain a bit more about the timings on this device and why they are like very critical to get perfectly right and if, if you're going to attempt this, how to basically kind of set them up for yourself. And that's what you find with these serial devices. A lot of the times you have to make sure everything is in sync. A good example is the input over here. All of these inputs are in synchronization or in sync. So when they enter, 
they all will enter at the same time. However, over here, yeah, the redstone runs out of signal strength and we have to add a repeater. However, by doing so, this also adds an additional redstone tick and delay to these cells, meaning these cells are now out of sync with these cells over here. So we also have to add repeaters to these cells too. So that means these cells will take one tick to write to, and these cells will also take one tick to write to because of this repeater over here to extend the signal strength. And the same, we, we do the same on the output. So as you can see, these cells will take one tick plus another tick to output. And these cells, of course, just have two repeaters instead of one. So they will just take two ticks to out output too. So um, as you can see, it actually works again. So I can like say, um, if I read from the address two, I should be getting whatever I put onto. So I guess, I guess a blank thing. But say I put a smiley face on two by inputting the smiley face. And then if we read from that location, we should be getting a smiley face. There we go. And of course we have to wait for this pulse lengthener to go out again. And then we can output it again because we have the rewrite command on and we should get this exact same thing. There we go. And then of course, if we turn this off output, we should get a smiley face. And then of course, if we output again, we should get a blank screen because it's well, all the data has traveled through. So that's basically how this um, really works. So I, I will be putting this up for world, world download. So pretty sure this is all my design. Uh, yeah, actually possibly this, yeah, the displays too. Um, this display is actually a very old version. Uh, I can't remember who originally made this display. But all I've done is added on a very simple serial interface to it. And unfortunately the way I did the serial interface also uh, is heavily based on timing. So you, if, if you were to extend this display and move it somewhere else, you would also have to figure out the timing or at least use a different uh, serial protocol, possibly sending like a signal bit with each of them or possibly sending like an additional line uh, with uh, clock pulses to clock whatever shift register you're using to decode the serial. But yeah, that, that's yeah unfortunate thing with how I made this display. So yeah, feel free to use this design if you want, I guess. And yeah, please like and subscribe. I'm out.